Hello YouTube, Redneck Reloader here. I'm going to do another loader, loading video today. Um, I'm going to do this similar to my 45 ACP video I did where um, I'm just loading up some scratch. This is really the first time I've done this. I've loaded five of these uh, or just a little while ago just to kind of work through the bugs so you don't have to sit through all the miserableness as I learned to do this. But um, there's going to be some new things here. First, let me apologize for my voice. I've been a little under the weather. And uh, today's my only day off when I can get out here and reload. So I'm going to do this anyway. So just bear with me. Um, I'm using some new things. Uh, I got a little tripod set up for my camera rather than my old duct tape it to the shower curtain rod that I used to use. So I'm trying a little different angle so you can see the press a little bit better and see a little more detail with the dies. Uh, I hope this works out good. Um, and I'm also loading a different bullet. I'm loading a 124 grain jacketed 9mm. I've never loaded this before. I've been loading a 145 grain lead bullet. Looks more like that. So um, there's some few slight differences there. One of them is the powder charge. I'm also loading a higher powder charge than I've ever loaded for 9mm. Um, going by my 44th edition Lyman, what I had been loading is with my unique powder has been more around 4 grains. What I'm going to load for these 124s is 5.5 grains. Now the range on here is 4.3 to 5.8, so I'm getting up a little bit closer to the maximum grains. The reason I'm doing this is when Lyman did this, they list some stuff underneath here. They list an accuracy load and a factory duplication load. And what those are, the accuracy load is if during their testing they found one load to be more accurate than the others, they would list that as the accuracy load. And the factory duplication load is if they found a load that matched factory feet per second ratings, they would list that. And under this 124 grain jacket, they actually have both because they don't always list that. But under this one, they have the accuracy load and the factory duplication load are the same. And those are both 5.5 grains of unique powder. So I wanted to try a load a few of these with the 5.5 to see how it went out. I usually use my lead dippers when I'm loading, but I don't have a lead dipper that will give me um, good results at uh, the 5.5. Um, I've got one that comes in around 5.6 or 5.7, but considering the max on this is 5.8 I really didn't want to get that close to the max so today I'm going to use this Konos uh, powder measure that um, I bought this is the first time I've used it loading but I did make a video on this if anybody's interested in these I'll just uh, have a video where I just share my thoughts on it what my experience was with it um, I also have a brand new set of dies that I'm using for this um, I'm going to tell a little story about this. I'll try to keep it brief. But, um, you know, I do everything on a budget. Everything I have here pretty much has come from eBay. It's been used. Uh, try to get the best deal I can. Uh, I went to my local reloading store to buy some small pistol primers because I was out of them. And <clears throat> I was looking at their dies. And I've been thinking about getting into 9mm. My plan was when I started reloading was just to stick with 45 for a while. And then later on move to 9mm and then maybe move on to 40 cal and some rifle rounds. But um, I just started looking at dies. And the used dies for 9mm, because it's you know popular round, on eBay, uh, saw most of them going for like $20 to $22.00. And then when you throw in the shipping, you're looking at $28 to $30 range for used dies. Well, um, when I was at my gun shop, they used to carry rock chucker equipment, but they've switched to Hornaday. So they've got whole walls full of Hornaday stuff. And every once in a while scattered, there's a few pieces of rock chucker stuff left over that they haven't gotten rid of yet. And when I was looking at the dies and just kind of pricing them, 
Uh, you know, most of the Hornadays are 50 to $60 range and up. But they had this one rock chucker. It's a brand new die, 9 millimeter with a tapered crimp. And uh, this also has a carbide sizing ring in it. So this is a very nice die. This was $27.99 marked down. I think they're just trying to get rid of all their rock chucker stuff. And I really didn't have the extra money, but I bought this anyway. And I'm really glad I did. This is a really nice die set. And, uh, but I got it for the price of what I would have got a used one for. Uh, I could still reload with a used one, but um, I really like this die. It's really easy to set up, and I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. The very first day, I, I brought it home. I sat down, and I just loaded 10 rounds just to try it out. Took them out, and every one of them just fired perfect in my gun. The first time out of the gate, and no problems with headspace or anything. So, um... I'm going to look at uh, Rock Tucker dies in the future. They seem to be real good quality dies. I'm sure you can get the same quality with Lee or Hornaday or Redding or anybody else, but I've been real happy with this one. So let's get started. I'm going to load five bullets here. Uh, and I'm going to go right from the scratch, setting up my uh, die right from the beginning and uh, walking you through how I do this. So um, I'm using, uh, this is once, actually twice fired brass. This was some once fired brass I bought. And I fired these one time, so uh, they've been fired twice. Uh, I don't tumble my brass or anything. I go like the old Lyman book. Um, they don't talk anything about tumbling or polishing brass. They say just wipe it off, which I do. I just wipe the outside of it. It's a little tarnished, but it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, the inside, I've got an old cleaning brush. It's kind of wore out. I don't use it anymore. And a little piece of cleaning rod, and I'll just run it on the inside just to make sure there's no... Uh, rocks or grit or anything like that in there um, and that's all I do so the first die we're going to set up is the decapping and resizing die full length this is a carbide die set so I do not have to lubricate the cases uh, so I'm not going to do that uh, the way they say to do this is to um, run your shell holder run your die up the ram up um, and screw the die down until it just touches the shell holder. Um, the instructions for the steel one say to actually go a little bit further so that you're camming over into it. But uh, with the carbide size and that, they say don't do that because you'll break the carbide uh, insert. So you just bring it down until it just touches, which is right there. And then you set your lock ring down. And I've got a little wrench. I'm just going to snug it. I'm not going to set the Allen screws on these because uh, I'm going to be pulling it right back out again. I'm just doing five. Now, uh, my decapping pin is sticking out here just a little bit. Um, they say you should adjust it so it sticks out about four tenths of an inch. Uh, a little less than half an inch. Um, that Just eyeballing it, that's about what it looks like to me. Uh, it's just, you want it down just enough to pop the primer out. If you go a little bit too far, it's not going to hurt anything because it just goes inside uh, the shell holder and then, you know, down into the ram. But the longer it is, the easier it would be to break, I guess. So I just put it down just enough. And um, I'm going to go ahead and run my case up in there. And you'll see the, well, I hear the primer pop. So there's my primer. It's out. Now, I am going to go ahead and reprime at this step. I haven't been doing that. When I've been loading 45, I go ahead and do it when I have the next die on there, which is my expander die. But I replaced this arm, this priming arm on my press. And the reason why, the one that came in my press, it's the old style. And this um, piston and sleeve, or this plunger and sleeve that goes in here, the way they're held in the old one is they, they go in and there's an Allen screw that holds it in place. And there's a little groove around it to hold it. Um, these new style ones, the uh, plunger screws into it. It's threaded, and it's not compatible with the old ones. Um, this press and the other one I have, my my old Rock Chucker Jr., they both came with arms, and they both were set up with a large priming uh, plunger on it. I don't have a small one, and I couldn't find a small one in the old style. Uh, all the ones now are threaded in so I, I thought about making one, and I'm still looking at that because I'm thinking about making one um, 
and putting the old style arm on here because I don't care for this new one. But I just went ahead and bought a new arm. It was about 20 bucks. It's aluminum. Um, this is a rock chucker arm. And I've got the two different inserts that I can screw in and out for large and pistol primers, large and small primers. Um, I don't like this arm for a couple of reasons. One, it's got a little shoulder right here. It sticks out further than my old one did. And when I raise my arm up and my ram, um, it will sit there balanced and stay. But this one pushes back on it a little bit and makes it want to fall all the time. That's a minor thing. I've even thought about just grinding it off. But the main reason I don't like this is it flips my primers. Um, I have loaded uh, 45 on my old one for a, a while now and never had a single problem with a primer. Every single one of them seated perfect. When I switched to this arm, both the large and small pistol primers I have the same problem with. Occasionally they will flip. And I can, I can load it in here very carefully and very slowly run it up into the shell hole. But at that, something is happening up inside that shell holder where this primer flips a little bit when you go to seat it. Sometimes it will go in sideways. And what happens when it goes in sideways is the case will get stuck in the shell holder and you can't get it out. And the only thing you can do is to deprime it again and pop that primer out so you can get the case out. So when I was priming at the next stage when I would take this die out and put in my expander die and I would prime then I would get a few cases through and then I would get one of those that went sideways and I would have to unscrew the die and screw my depriming die back in again so I said I'm just going to go ahead with these and start priming at this stage so if I do have one that flips I can just pop it right back up and deprime it without having to switch my dies out the other thing it does that's even more unnerving is they'll flip completely over. And I'll seat my, my primer and then I'll pull it out and it's seated upside down. So then the only thing you can do is deprime it, but you're pressing on the back of the live primer when you do that, which is kind of unnerving. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I've had to do it at least, a, I'd say, seven or eight times, and I've never had a primer go off yet. Um, if it did go off, it would be contained within the shell holder and the ram. I think you get a lot of noise and some fire and that'd be about it, but it's still very aggravating. I don't know what it is about this new arm. So, um, I think I'm going to switch back to my old arm and I'm going to make a little, um, plunger, uh, to fit. And I've got some ideas. I'm going to work on that. And when I get it, I'll probably make a video and show you how to do it in case you're having the same problem. But anyway, on with the loading. So I'm going to prime at this point. So I'm going to press this in. I'm going real gentle with it because I don't want it to flip. And I'm going to see it. And that felt weird. I think it flipped. I'm going to see. No, it just didn't seat. It flipped it all the way out. Uh, this is a, this priming arm is a stinker. I'm telling you. Um, I'm going to try this again. So I'm going to run it up. Lower it in there. Lower it. And that one's good. That was a good one. And it's in there good. So hopefully we can get through the rest of these with no problems. So there's the old primer out. And now I'm going to seat the new primer. And that one's good. I'm getting real paranoid with these primers. It was something I never used to pay attention to. And now, with this arm, every time I see one, I have to look at it real close. And I kind of slow down a little bit. Trying to take it easy. So that I have better success with it. But I just do not like this priming arm. I don't know if it's just cut differently or beveled differently than the old style or what. But it's not as reliable. So one more. So all I'm doing is running it up in here. This is resizing the case, depriming it, and then we are repriming it with the small pistol primer. And that one's good. So I got five good ones out of that. So we're good. I just wasted one. I've gone through a lot more primers with this arm because I got a lot of wasted ones, crushed ones and stuff. And now we're done with that die. So everything's being resized. Now, if you were going to do 500 rounds, this is what you do. I'm just doing five, but you just do the same thing. 
that's the thing with the single stage press. You just do the same uh, same action on every case that you're going to do. So now I'm just going to take this back out. And, and like I said, I'm going through the extremes here. This is like you just pulled it out of the box and you're using it for the first time. Um, you probably uh, wouldn't do this. Once you get it set, the idea is... Uh, to lock these rings down so that you have them set and you don't have to go through this every time but I've noticed a lot of the reloading videos um, people will do this and say okay we're going to show you from scratch and then they'll just kind of skip over that step and say um, all right make sure your dies are properly set up and then you get a whole lot of a video of them just working the ram uh, I figure it's more valuable to actually see the die set up so that's why I do it this way um, this uh, die the way you want it set up, they say um, you want to not hit the shell holder with this. So, um, what they say to do is to run your ram up and then uh, back the uh, the plunger back. Back it off. And you're going to screw the die down until it's just above the shell holder. So, what I've been doing is... I screw it down till it touches and then I back it off a half of a turn and then I set my lock ring down because the the die itself is not doing anything to the case the work is coming from this uh, expander plug and that's why this doesn't have to touch anything the expander plug is what's doing the work so then you back the expander plug all the way off and you ran your case up, then you screw this expander plug in by hand. And you'll start feeling the resistance where the expander plug goes into the die. And what they say to do is to go ahead and screw it down a little bit more until you feel a good firm resistance. Then start checking it. Now this expander, this is one of the things I really like about these Rock Tucker dies. It uses an M style expander which after reading a little bit I, I thought it was uh, just a rock checker thing but apparently um, Lyman uh, had these back in the 70s and I guess when their patent ran out a lot of people got into it but a uh, rather than just when it expands the case mouth instead of just doing it like this it, it puts a little cedar up on the top of it it's a two-step thing and that little cedar part of it is parallel to the case body. So it's not just a flare. And what happens when you set a jacketed or a plated bullet into it, when it seats into that ring, it snaps into place and it holds it real firmly. And so that's why how they say to uh, adjust it is just expand it and keep trying to bullet until you get it, that bullet to the point where it snaps in. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can feel it. When it seats in there, it seats real nice. So that's not there yet. It's not going in, so I need to go a little further. So I'm going to turn it a half of a turn and try again. Not quite. That's real close. I'm going to do another half turn. almost there it's just build I can just barely set the bullet in there but it's not snapping in there yet so I'm gonna go down another quarter of a turn or so still not quite there yet another quarter turn And there's a little belling there. It, it will kind of fit in there, but it's it's not snapping in there like I want it to. So I'm going to go another quarter turn. There, it just popped right in. So um, I'm going to set that. <coughs> Excuse my cough. I'm going to run this up there so it holds that plunger steady and I'm going to lock this lock ring down because it's such a little finicky setting I don't want it to move on me. 
Okay, now, I know you're not going to be able to see this on camera, and I'm sorry, but when you set this in here, it, it's just kind of balanced it right now, but if I push it just a little bit, it snaps. And it sits in there real nice. It won't come out. It's not wobbly. It's nice and straight. Um, it's it's a very good expander. I really like this. And I have found if you just do this, they seat very nicely, and they work well. Come in, they taper real, taper crimp real nicely, and everything works out good with them. So um, I really like this guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the rest. And since I'm only doing five, I'm just gonna kind of check them all here. Yep, it snaps right in there. Fits real nicely. So just a perfect expansion for this die set. And the last one. And I'm just going to check it. And it sits in there just perfect. So those are all done. So that's all we do with that die. So now I'm going to back that out. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and snug this just a little bit because I am going to use this die after I'm done with this video. I'm going to do some more and I'm going to go ahead and just keep that setting on there for this one. So I'm just going to snug everything down and just use an Allen wrench. To snug that lock ring down now I've got that all set so when I come back and do some more all I have to do is just screw it down and run them I don't have to fool around with it I always double check make sure that the setting hasn't changed any but uh, it's, these are pretty good about locking down now this is the last one this is a bullet seating and crimping die uh, before I do this I'm going to charge one of my cases because at this point we're getting ready to uh, uh, see the bullet and everything I need to charge a case so I'm going to take one case and go to my powder measure and go ahead and charge it I don't charge all my cases at once I do them one at a time and I check and make sure I can see the powder in there um, I've already got my scale set up I'm gonna go ahead and just dump one just to make sure on my jiggling around I haven't changed anything I've got this set at 5.5 grains if you watch the video on my this Konos it was pretty good, but every once in a while it would throw a little heavy. I never had to throw one light. So I'm shooting for around 5.5 grains, but just to make sure I don't go over that 5.8 max, I actually set this back a little bit. So this is set at 5.5 grains, but it's really throwing more like 5.4, 5.45. That's fine with me because uh, that's fine. That's well within the range, and I'd rather be a little bit low than be a little high. So. Uh, I know that I'm still set good, and I'm throwing pretty close to that 5.5, so I'm going to go ahead and do this again, and fill that with powder, and then I'm going to set my case in here. Now, um, the directions for this, uh, it calls for you to set it up with the case in, so you're supposed to run it up, and screw it down until you just feel it touch that case mouth. And back this stem all the way off. So you just screw it down until it just touches the case mouth. There. I'm touching it right now. And I'm going to just temporarily, I'm going to back it off about a half a turn and lock it down. Because I don't want to do any crimping at this point. So now you're supposed to put a bullet in and set your bullet depth. And the way you would do this is to see the bullet in that case and run it up in there without doing any crimping and then dial the cedar plug down a little bit at a time and push that bullet in. You can do it while it's in there. You can actually push it up in there and dial that seating plug down and you feel it hit the bullet. And then you can actually just kind of torque on this a little bit and get that bullet good and seated. And then at this point, you're just adjusting this for your depth. You run it up in there, turn it a little bit, and you keep doing that until you get the correct overall depth. Now, the way I'm setting mine, the maximum on these 9 millimeters is 
0.169 inches. I actually want to set mine more about 1.150 because that is what these aluminum federal factory rounds are set at and I have shot a thousand of these through my gun and they all cycle flawlessly. This is a good length round. I've been reloading to this length and it feeds good in all my guns. So this is what I'm going to set my length at. Now you could just do this and keep rechecking it with the micrometer. I'm not going to do it that way. The way I'm going to do it is load in this factory round and put it up in there. And now I've got this backed off so there's no crimp going on. So now I'm just going to screw this uh, plunger in until it touches. And that sets my length. So now I'll take that out and put in my bullet I'm working on. Run it up in there. And now it's set to the correct length. Same as the factory. And that's right where I want it. So I've got my length set. But now I need to set the crimp. So the way the directions call for this is to back that plunger out, that seating plunger. And now we're going to start working with this one and setting the crimp. So we're going to loosen that. And we've got our, our loaded case in there. So we're going to loosen this lock ring. And the directions call for you to turn this die body in until you meet resistance. Now that is the the crimp coming in contact with the case mount. Now it says to turn it some more until you get firm resistance. About like that. Now you can take it out and check it. Now that is putting a crimp on it, but I don't know if it's going to be enough crimp or not. So the way I'm going to check that is to do a, a plunk test in my gun. So plunk it in there. That actually looks pretty good. Uh, comparing it with the factory round and looking at the head space, the way I check it, there's a little shoulder right here and this card just barely touches around. It kind of rides up over top of it when I push it up against it. So it's just almost completely flush. Just stands a little bit proud. And when I put this round in, it plunks right in. And it does the same way. I'm just barely scraping that when I run it across. So that right there is all I got to do. And it drops right out, plunks in easily. That's a good crimp right there. As I said, these dies are so easy to set up. And I've had such good luck with them compared to the 45 ACP. So that's a good round right there. That, uh, that's every bit as good as the factory round as far as loading, cycling and stuff. Um, looks real good. Good looking crimp. No need to do anything else with that. Now the only other thing we have to do now is to set our bullet depth again because we backed this off while we were adjusting the crimp. So I'm going to run this back up in there. I'm going to take my wrench and tighten that die body down a little bit because I've got the crimp set where I want it. And I don't want it moving on me. Then I'm going to screw down this bullet seating plunger until it touches. And I'm going to snug that up and we're all set. That's all you got to do with that die. And now I'm going to load and charge another case. Set it in there. Seat the bullet in there until it clicks. There you go. There's a completed round. I'm just going to double check it. Plunk test. Seat's in there nice. Falls right out. Perfect. So, just keep doing that. And I can kick out as many rounds as I want to. So I've got three more here to load. The bullet just clicks right in. Seats nicely. That's a completed round. Click the bullet in. Do another plunk test just to make sure we're staying perfect. Can't beat that. As I said, this 9mm, I don't know if it's the die set 
<clears throat> excuse my voice, my the die set or the nine millimeters just being a little more forgiving than 45. But uh, as I said, I've not had any problems with this uh, nine millimeter at all. Uh, for the very first time I loaded these, they just loaded great, plunk right in the gun, no headspace issues at all, no case swelling. Um, all the problems that I had with the 45, which if you're interested in, you can go back and watch my video on the 45. Um, I haven't had any of those issues at all with this one. Uh, this has just been fantastic. So uh, I think in the future, if I do get a set of dies for my 40 cal, I think I'm going to get these RCBS dies because I've been real tickled with these. But uh, I'll just have to see what's available at the time and pricing and stuff. That's it, folks. That's all I got for today. That's uh, 9 millimeter and how I do it. And I've been pretty successful with these. I'm real happy with it. So um, this is Redneck Reloader signing off. God bless all of you. And have a great day.